Nick's shaving soap. It must have fallen from the barber's supplies when the ship wrecked. You'd best believe in that. That there hand lotion be for the rough, dry skin that can often accompany ship repair. Uh, Haggis? Aye. My, that's a big bottle of lotion you have there. That's right, she be. And don't ye be getting any ideas about stealing it. We are sure to be needing it, you see. Carpentry on this tropical climate can and will prematurely age your skin. Tis but one of the many hardships a pirate must face daily during this barbarous age. Aye, and if we pirates didn't carry hand lotion aboard all our ships, we'd probably die from the chafing. Wow, if I were doing a history report on pirates and I included that fact, I'd get an A+. We're talking guaranteed A+. And that A+, just might get you into the college of your choice. Think about it. There's no way that I can have even a drop of lotion? Well, maybe we could make a deal. You see, we need to be repairing the ship. She's leaky as a colander. And for some unknown reason, the ship supplies of tar have been depleted. How the previous crew could set sail without any tar aboard eludes me. But the fact is, unless we get us some tar or something like it, we're doomed to this island for good. Hey, I'd give you the whole blooming bottle of lotion if you could find me something to patch the ship so we can be on our way home. I'll let you get back to work. Okay, fella, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, I guess it didn't hurt a bit. He must be shedding. I feel a dark presence coming over me. Hi there. Ah! Ah, please, keep it down. No screaming. Oh, my head. Hi, I'm Guybrush. And you would be? 
I am Madame Zima, mistress of the ancient arts, a precognition and augury, diva of divination. Cool, you're a fortune teller. Ah, that and so much more. Whatever, tell me my fortune. I do not think you wish to hear. There are things of which a man is better off being ignorant. Oh, but I'm already ignorant of so many things. I want to know my future. No, you are not meant to know. I bet you just can't do it. That's the problem. You can't do it, and you're afraid everyone will find out you're just a phony. You know, I could put a curse on you that would make every morsel of food you eat become a ravenous cockroach inside your intestines, giving you the most excruciating death imaginable. So, are you gonna tell me my fortune or not? I'm not kidding! Okay, okay. What's in the cards for me? Fame? Fortune? Romance? Ah, very well. We will consult the cards. The process of reading the tarot is a very complex one. Each draw of the cards foretells an upcoming event in your life. When assembled, they will tell the story of your future. A future filled with twists and... Ah! Good Lord, woman, stop that screaming. What is it? Is that a good... Ah! It is death. Well, in the tarot, death just means change, right? I mean, it's nothing to get worried about, right? Uh, yeah, sure, whatever you say. Now please go! There must be some mistake. Read my tarot cards again. There is no mistaking your fate, Guybrush. The cards do not lie. But if you insist, once again, it is death. I'm feeling luckier. Give me another tarot reading. Luck is not involved here, Guybrush. It is your destiny. Whatever. Let's see what the cards say this time. The card says, death. Are you sure you're not dealing from the bottom of the deck? Remember that curse I told you about? Okay, okay. Hit me. Death. How many of those cards do you have, anyway? How about giving me one more tarot reading? This is evil work, Guybrush. The fates have conspired against you, and no man can interfere. Your path has been determined. Okay, I get your point. I really do. Just one more time for Guybrush. <gasps> Let me guess. Death? Leave this place. Huh? You are putting us all in grave danger. Your very presence will bring us nothing but sickness, tragedy, and death. Oh, yeah? Well... Demon! Demon! Look! A three-headed monkey! Ah! Then the prophecies were true! Where? I don't see anything. He must have run away. This is a very bad omen. It's a picture of the galley of gravy. Oh, it's a gravy boat. Hi, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm... Stop yelling! I wasn't yelling, I was just... Oh, I've got a terrible hangover. Find something to clear my head, and I can talk to you. And keep it down.
I found this egg for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. Here's a wild pepper for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. This is some of the hair of the dog that bit me. Shh. Thanks. That's all the ingredients I need. Let me quietly mix up a dose. Much better. Here, you can take the rest. I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? Give me a big fruity drink with an umbrella in it. Good choice. It's a delicious taste of the islands, made with lemon, grapefruit, and ground beef. Hey, don't I get one of those decorative umbrellas to go on my tropical drink? Um. I don't think we have any. No, I'm wrong. I do have this one. What do you know about the lost ring of Blood Island? Oh, that's a very sad chapter in my family's history. My great aunt Minnie Stroni Goodsoup was a well-to-do member of Blood Island society. Her one weakness was her romantic nature. She had a thing for pirates, one in particular. He came into port, she fell instantly in love, and they were engaged within the week. Then, on the eve of their wedding, he stole the fantastic Good Soup diamond from her ring and sold it to smugglers on Skull Island. She wore the empty engagement band on her finger until the day she died, which was not long after. Some say she still haunts the Good Soup family too. It is a sad story, is it not? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, could you repeat that? Get lost, Chowderhead. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. That opened it. That makes the drink oh so much more appealing. It just occurred to me that mixing medicine and alcohol is a really stupid and possibly lethal thing to do. If I were a real person instead of a lovably inept cartoon character with the potential for a few more sequels, I wouldn't even consider it. Skull! That's odd. It's supposed to cause drowsiness. I don't feel the least bit drowsy. In fact, I, uh... In fact, I feel, uh... <laughs> so then the Undertaker says, I wanted to be a pallbearer. But I couldn't stop coughing. Oh, 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 you crack me up, Mort. So, what's with the new guy? Oh, he's been like that for an hour now. Passed out cold. He'll come around. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Hmm. I guess that's the end of the game, then. What with him being the main character and all? Funny. I didn't think you could die in LucasArts Adventure Games. Well, maybe they're trying something different. When I should take care of him? Would you? It's bad for business, having him just lie there. Rest in peace and all that. Hey! I'm not really dead! Oh, come on, cut it out! Yikes. Where's that telltale pounding coming from? It's coming from within one of these coffins. From the dead. 
dead that surround me. They must know my horrible secret. They'll never let me rest until I've paid for the wrongs I've committed against. Wait a second. I don't have a horrible secret. I'm glad to be finally out of that thing, even though it was a spacious, comfortable model with plenty of leg and headroom. Well, hello there! Say, you look familiar. Uh, yes, well... Uh... Of course! Guybrush Threepwood! You're the one who locked me in there in the first place. Well, you see, I've been meaning to... No, no, I won't hear of it. That was the best time of my life. Gave me plenty of time to think, you know? To think about the things that really matter. I don't know if you've considered this, son, but live burials are not an altogether uncommon experience here in the Caribbean. I wasn't aware of that. Not to mention pirate raids and deadly sea battles, huge man-eating reptiles, dangerous quicksand pits, trigger-happy duelists, and of course, those pesky undead. Have you ever thought of what would happen to your loved ones should this gruesome fate befall you? No, but... but... Well, of course, you have plenty of time to think about it. Or do you? I'm one of the lucky ones. I've been dead. It's given me a whole new perspective on life. A life that I'm going to devote to making sure people's life insurance needs are met. Here, take one of my business cards I've had made up. If you've been locked in that coffin, how are you able to have business cards made? Now's not the time to worry about the technicality, son. Now's the time to ask yourself, are you covered? Run along now and let me set up my office. Hmm? We're trapped in here. The door's locked. Nonsense! This is one of Stan's cozy crypts, all equipped with a patented secure lock release mechanism. Just jiggle the handle there. You've convinced me. I want to buy some insurance. A wise choice, and one you won't soon regret. The question isn't whether or not you can afford to buy an insurance policy, it's whether you can afford not to. Speaking of which, can you afford to buy an insurance policy? Well, how much does it cost? Oh, that depends on a variety of factors. How much coverage you need, how much you're willing to spend, all sorts of highly complicated sliding scale insurance equations and such. But I won't bore you with all that. Just let me ask you this. How much money do you have? Well, I've got these wooden nickels. I see. Maybe I've confused you somewhere along the line. While nothing would please me more to send you out of here, with the peace of mind that your family will be provided for in the unlikely event of your death, I have to run a business here. If you can't at least show me some collateral, I can't give you a policy. This authentic pirate relic. A genuine tooth from an actual pirate. Only one of its kind. Is that real gold? The finest known to man. Not much spit on it either anymore. Now you're starting to speak my language. All right, let's find a coverage plan that suits your needs. And you can rest assured that you've provided for your family well after your unfortunate departure. What are the terms of this plan exactly? It's quite simple, son. When you die, whoever holds that policy gets a lot of money. A lot of money? Wow. Wow is right. Now I want you to be careful out there. Okay, I will. Thanks. No, I'm serious. I want you to be very, very careful. Will do.
Hi guys! I guess you'll be wondering how I came to be back from the dead. No questions for the dead guy come back to life? No questions like, is there life after death or is there a heaven? Will there be adequate parking? Fine, be that way. I wouldn't tell you about the hereafter if you begged me. That jars for my tips. Put it back. But I was going to put a whole lot of money in it. Too much for me to carry around with me. So I'm going to have to take it with me and fill it up. Oh, okay then. I don't believe we've met. Who are you? I am Griswold, last of the good soups and proprietor of this hotel. You may have heard of us and our soup restaurant resort empire that stretches across the Caribbean. Well... Uh, this was once our proudest resort. In recent years, however, hard times have befallen the family Good Soup and left me alone in this rotting hotel. The Good Soup Plantation Resort Hotel and Casino I thought if I died, I'd be buried with your aunt. Well, isn't it obvious? You can't be buried in the Good Soup family crypt unless you're a member of the Good Soup family. A member of the family, huh? Uncle Griswold, it's me! Don't you recognize me? Recognize you? I've never seen you before in my life. What is your name? Split Pea with Ham. Split Pea with Ham? Actually, my name is P. Hamilton Goodsoup. Split's just a nickname. Hmm. I don't recall having any relatives with that name. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. Baron C. Lambert Chowder Good Soup, pioneer of crouton technology. He looks a lot like the guy at the bar. I'd better get rid of this incriminating picture frame. What? There, I've cut out the face. I can't use the portrait face with that. Oh, there's nothing like family. No matter what may happen in the topsy-turvy world of the Caribbean resort business, I can always relax in the knowledge that I come from good, wealthy stock. Breeding. That's what's important. Breeding and culture. Just like Grandfather Lambert. Breeding, culture, and lots and lots of really old money. Mm, it makes a man proud. It's funny. I don't remember Grandfather Lambert as looking so... so common. Oh, weird. It's like his eyes follow me. Pictures like that really creep me out.
It's locked. I guess I'm better at this pirating thing than I thought. It worked! I'm not sure if that's strong enough to hold it. I might need one. There. The bed has been nailed down. That ought to do it. Wow. I'll bet his room charges are pretty hefty by now. The Good Soups, A Life in Pictures by M.M. Good Soup. Look at me. Don't I look just like a good soup? Now that you mention it, you do bear a slight resemblance to my great-grandfather C. Lambert Good Soup. Clammy? Why, folks back home used to tell me all the time. You're the spitting image of old chowder good soup. You know, I think you're right. Ah, I wonder why I didn't see it before. I could just talk about good soup history all day. What about that first fateful journey made to the Caribbean? Oh, you mean the one that... Baron Salmon Bisque de Good Soup began in 1621? Exactly. He landed on Scab Island with just a spoon and a dream. In just four short years, he had formed the largest chain of all soup restaurants in the Western Hemisphere. By 1635, he had driven the entire Van Salad family out of the Caribbean and had a restaurant empire that spanned the globe. Actually, the Van Salads were not driven out until 1637, and the Good Soup chain of restaurants and resorts never did become popular in the South Pacific. Yes, we are. All right, whatever. Well, son, it looks like you were right. Welcome back to the glorious name of Good Soup. I'm, uh, honored. And as a good soup, you're welcome to every benefit the name provides. Instant prestige around Blood Island, a 10% discount to any of the good soup resorts in the Caribbean, and, of course, medical, dental, and a 401k. And the best thing of all, if you should happen to drop dead, you will be buried in the extravagant good soup family crypt. It's as if all my dreams have come true. You just stole that mirror, didn't you? No, I didn't. It's right there. Look. Hmm, I guess you're right. Oh, dear. I'm starting to look old. From all that drinking. Mind your own business. I'd like a drink, please. Right. Oh dear, he's had a sudden and completely unexpected relapse of death. Oh, and just as we were getting reacquainted, as his kinsman, it is my duty to give him a proper burial. It is my solemn vow. The youthful P. Hamilton Goodsoup 
shall be buried in the Good Soup family crypt. All right. There's a hole in the ceiling of this crypt. I think I might be able to squeeze through. Wow, it's a tunnel that opens on a deep, dark forest. It looks familiar somehow. As if I've seen it in a dream. Or maybe it's, I don't know. Great jumping monkeys! A terrifying horde of stunningly rendered rabbit jaguars. They're coming right at me. Whew, it's a good thing I couldn't get through that hole. I'd be done for. Yikes. Ahem. Oh, hello there. Hey, nice ring. Oh. Was it something I said? I hate this ring. It's been passed down from mother to daughter in the Good Soup family for generations. It was to be my wedding ring until that evil pirate stole the diamond and left me. Left me here to die of a broken heart. Go into the light. If only it were that easy. I'm afraid I can never leave this crypt until I marry. Are you attached? <laughs> Engaged, actually. <laughs> oh, what a shame. You sure have pretty eyes. Oh. Who are you and what are you doing here? I am Mini Good Soup, last in a long line of eligible Good Soup debutantes. I was buried here exactly one week after my wedding day. A wedding day that never came. What happened? I was the belle of Blood Island. How many people can claim that? Oh, how the lands adored me. I was courted by the richest, most handsome men in the Caribbean. But all my suitors bored me to tears. I wanted someone dangerous. I wanted a pirate. By the way, what do you do for a living? Flooring inspector. Oh. Then one day, a real pirate sailed his ship into the bay. I fell for him instantly, and we became engaged. But he left me standing at the altar, and I died of a broken heart. Wow. That bites. Oh, I know. Were there any other suitors you found attractive? Well, <laughs> there was one I could have fallen for. Young Charles de Goulash. <gasps> he had such a radiant smile. What happened to him? You know, it's funny. I don't know. He checked into the hotel one night and I never saw him again. This is just a shade too creepy for me. I'm leaving. <laughs> Die! Oh, I'm not going to do that again. I think I broke my skull. I'm all skull. It's your own fault. Stop scaring me like that. So I did scare you? Really? Well, startled is more like it. Oh. B but startled in a terrified kind of way. You really are very, very scary. Don't talk down to me. I really don't have any choice. I saw you get out of that crypt. Does this mean that you're dead? No, I was only faking. Darn. I thought together we could walk among the living and spawn a new wave of terror throughout the Caribbean. So what you're saying is that you only love me for my legs. Something like that. Mister, help! What? Who's there? 
Who said that? Who's scaring poor old Mort, the grave digger? There's been a horrifying mistake. I've been buried alive in the Good Soup family crypt. All right. This joke has gone far enough. You kids should be ashamed of yourselves. It's no joke. I'm really trapped in here. Crazy kids with your long hair and your Baroque music? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm gonna go sulk in the darkness now. Have a good time. I've got it. Hey, what happened to the light? Murray, do your stuff. Okay. Boom! Ah! Mortal fool, release me from this wretched tomb. I must be set free or I will haunt you forever. I will hide your keys beneath the cushions of your upholstered furniture. And never more will you be able to find socks that match. All right, hang on. I'm coming. Great work, Murray. I... I was terrifying, wasn't I? My demonic powers have made me omnipotent! <laughs> Uh-oh. Looks like the lantern ran out of oil. There. It's open. Now shuffle off and give me peace. 